What is the most important aspect that Nintendo should be focusing on when making the next major Zelda game? We're not talking about spin-offs or remasters, not even remakes. We're talking about that next Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom level experience. One that, at least based on recent releases, should arrive sometime in 2028 or 2029. In fact, if Nintendo follows their typical patterns, it could be revealed as soon as 2026, giving us all that magical hope of a 2027 release. So it's going to be a couple of years until we at least see what the direction the series is going to go in. Still, I think it's important we have conversations like this one because the future of the Zelda series is something a lot of Nintendo fans are invested in. Look, if you're new around my channel, you may have this assumption that all we do is talk about rumors and leaks, more specifically, ones pertaining to Nintendo's next generation system. And it's a fair and understandable viewpoint because that is indeed what a lot of my content has been in 2024. This is in large part because we're waiting for Nintendo to announce something exciting for us to cover. Sure. We have had game releases on average about once per month, at least published by Nintendo. And yes, the Thousand Year Door is coming back, and that's certainly noteworthy and fun. We've had multiple videos discussing Thousand Year Door, and even a whole dedicated section related to the game and the 30 FPS debate in the podcast last week. Be sure to go watch the full clip of that debate on the Nintendite Podcast Clips channel, link below. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD also got a recent trailer and update, and surprise, surprise, it looks like an HD version of Luigi's Mansion 2, which is still pretty awesome. But none of these releases, even the most recent in Endless Ocean, Luminous, is moving the needle online. In fact, on YouTube, searches for these games are extremely low. So naturally, we've had a huge focus on what's next from Nintendo. The rumors direct us to talk about the Switch 2, as does all the search traffic indicators. But in truth, the system doesn't matter without games. If you recall last year, we had extensive coverage of Tears of the Kingdom for months heading into launch. Every tiny morsel of new footage, interview quotes, and everything in between, we became sort of that one-stop shop for all things Tears of the Kingdom. Which is exciting. There's nothing quite like covering and anticipating and even playing such a massive game. We did some similar coverage on a smaller scale for Pikmin 4 and Mario Wonder, but this pales in comparison to what we did for Zelda. Now why is that? Well simply put, Zelda is my favorite franchise, and I spent the better part of 20 years of my life covering the series extensively. That is what leads to today's conversation about a game that isn't even going to see the light of day most likely until 2026 at the earliest. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom set new bars for the franchise, but now the series producer and director are both ready to move beyond what those games were, leaving behind many of the things that made those games tick. A.G. Aonuma already told us in interviews last year that the abilities aren't coming back and that the only thing sticking around 100% for sure are the games being open air. That's probably a good thing considering the pure popularity of open world experiences. There are many things we could talk about, and Nintendo can do a lot of the stuff better. No more memories, something better than shrines, expanded dungeons, more character growth, and a lot more. But one fundamental thing keeps coming to my mind the world. It can be argued the largest appeal of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is exploration. Unadultured, need to see what's on the other side of the mountain, exploration. Friend of the channel, Stealth, had a recent take about this very thing on X, stating the following, the way I see it, the most important thing for the next major Zelda game is to get out of Hyrule. Take the key learnings from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and take us somewhere completely new. Now, the franchise has done a very good job over 30 plus years reinventing Hyrule several times from The Legend of Zelda to Ocarina of Time, flooding the world in The Wind Waker and beyond, but Zelda hasn't always been in Hyrule. 
Majora's Mask introduced Termina, the World of the Ocean King in Phantom Hourglass, the Great Sea in The Wind Waker, Kolohin Island in Link's Awakening, Labrina in Oracle of Ages, and Holodrum in Oracle of Seasons. Heck, Hytopia in Triforce Heroes. You can even argue for new Hyrule in Spirit Tracks, simply because it is not indeed the Hyrule of yesterday, but a new land founded after the events of Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass. That's eight games taking place outside of the traditional Hyrule, and you can maybe argue for a ninth if you want to talk about Skyward Sword, out of 20 canon mainline Zelda games. That's nearly half the series. I wanted to bring this up because leaving Hyrule for somewhere new shouldn't be viewed negatively. It should be viewed as a refreshing way to enjoy an open-world Zelda title. It's not that the next open-world game can't take place in Hyrule, and it can be so far in the future or on another branch of the timeline or somewhere else that it's drastically changed yet again, like it has so many times in the past, making it fun to explore. It is sometimes something completely fresh is simply a better gaming experience. We know the key locations of Hyrule. We know about all of its primary races. But there are lands, as we have seen in prior games, beyond Hyrule, and there are even more lands often mentioned but never visited. There are endless possibilities when taking things to a new land. For starters, an open-world kind of game, the players would literally not know what to expect. Gone are the traditional forest, desert, mountain, field, water sort of zones, and instead enters concepts that might not have felt feasible in Hyrule. Remember the swamp area in Termina? The point is that players would be in a fresh experience all throughout the exploration aspect of the game. A new land to conquer and explore just seems enthralling. You could introduce a ton of new enemy types as well, let alone entirely new races. I'm not saying let's leave everything behind. This is a Zelda game, and a splash of familiarity is to be expected. But what if you only see races like the Rito, the Zora, the Gorons as travelers with small camps rather than giant towns and cities because there are other people that occupy this land? What if the new land isn't destroyed and instead is an established kingdom and sweeping cityscapes? What if the great evil is someone besides Ganon because in this world, Ganon no longer exists? Heck, what if the greatest threat is really an impending civil war and Lincoln friends get to navigate the complexities of this? The ideas are endless when you bring a new world to the mix because you aren't beholden to what the old world provided. The amount of new ideas that can exist if they leave Hyrule is truly astounding, and we have seen this across the many Zelda games that have done just that. They don't need to leave Hyrule, to be clear, to make a successful game, and there is no doubt we will return to a vastly changed Hyrule again someday. But part of what makes Hyrule special is when Nintendo gives us time to miss it. Why was returning to Hyrule so exciting in Twilight Princess? Well, the prior two 3D Zelda games were Majora's Mask and The Wind Waker, two games that focused on new lands. As fans, we had time to miss the Hyrule that was created in Ocarina of Time, and Twilight Princess felt like they brought us home. After two enthralling adventures in Hyrule over the last decade, and the first one to let us do so in a truly open-world 3D Zelda game, I'd like to see them take us somewhere new, and what creative juices that could enable for them moving forward. Take us on an unexpected adventure, and then in another decade, maybe it's time to bring us back to a vastly different Hyrule again. Of course, as always, these are just my thoughts and opinions, and I really do look forward to you sharing all of yours down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.